Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm going to make a new piece in PicoCAD using the prompt word ancient. This idea comes from the PicoCAD daily Twitter account, who I'd recommend checking out if you're looking for daily ideas of what to build. When I saw this prompt, I immediately thought of making a sword in the stone kind of object piece. So to get started, I'm going to create the large rock by extruding the faces of a simple cube object to multiply it out into two levels of a 2x3 grid of cubes. Now that there's a lot of mesh to work with, I drag and highlight groups of vertices on certain sides and bump them out from a starting position to generate some kind of rounding to this form. At this point I'm doing all these reshapes in a symmetrical manner, because there's a lot of internal mesh at play here and I don't want to lose track of like how all these points are going to work with one another. So here it is after the first round of reshaping, and you know it's looking like a simple symmetrical rock. So I think what it needs um, probably first is just some more dramatic angles to the main shape so that it can actually catch more shadows while rotating through this rendered form. Going back to the mesh, I'm pulling some of the main vertices out even further to generate these sharper angles. And again, I'm still doing this fairly evenly for the time being because um, of that internal structure. Uh, actually, you can see when this rotates, we're getting some clipping from those internal triangles. And when you see those, uh, you can actually just right click and select delete mesh and it'll erase that polygon from being textured. Since it's one of those internal polygons anyway, uh, there's no need for us to see anything from it. And deleting this will lead to a cleaner look for the outer surface since we won't be getting those clip throughs. Sometimes though, I found that there are internal faces that are really tough to find the right orientation that'll actually allow you to click them um, because the outer faces tend to take precedence. And in this case, uh, I just got lucky with that innermost triangle because I could just simply click and delete it. But if you are having a rough time getting a click on that polygon face, uh, the other thing I've done sometimes is holding X while clicking on a vertex instead. And then dragging that point just out to some ridiculous spot outside the object. And then you can right click and delete the face from there. I try to avoid this though because it still leaves the ghost vertex floating out there, uh, even though it's no longer active anyway. I should probably cross-reference that with the user manual at some point because there's probably some better like by the book method, I'm not sure. But either way, you can see that with all that internal structure being deleted, we're left with this very clean wireframe that's just a lot easier to look at and evaluate. And we know that when it's textured, we're not going to be getting any of that clipping. So now that it's tidy, it's time to shift around the remaining vertices to make this rock actually look asymmetrical. And I'm actually going to leave the overall gesture of it as sort of a rounded form because I think that'll be best for framing the sword that'll be coming out of it. So the goal here is really just to shift a few polygons around so that we end up picking more shadows and picking up shadows at different timing while it's rotating through that render. For the sword, I'm starting from a cube and extruding it upward, and I'm generating four segments along that rectangle. One of the reasons that uh, these many segments are required are just so I can section out the area that can be extruded to create the guard at the hilt. So I bump those faces out to yield this sort of rudimentary cross shape to mold the sword from. And the bottom, I bring these vertices in to create the pointed tip of the sword, of the blade, I guess. I've kept the hilt design pretty simple here with just a couple angles. And then I've created a small lip that I can add a cylinder shape to for the pommel. The default cylinder came in at a different angle than what I need. So I'm clicking and rotating it around to find the right orientation before popping it into place. Likewise, I've rotated the sword also because I want to have it coming out of the stone at an angle. Seeing these two pieces come together though, uh, it looks quite goofy because I didn't realize how the scale that I've designed these at would be so incompatible with one another. Um, like, it honestly just kind of looks like it wouldn't be any trouble to pull that sword out of there. Um, or it might even make a decent club if you just left it in the stone and used that as a weapon. But uh, either way, I went back to the rock framework and then I just dragged those points around to kind of scale the rock up. And now the scale is much more believable. Well, maybe not much more, but it's better than it was. Before moving any further, I'm going to color these for now and just see how we're looking. So I'm over in Photoshop now preparing the texture artwork using the compatible canvas size of 128 by 128 pixels and the Pico 8 color palette. I've learned from my previous PicoCAD pieces that there's not really an incredible payoff for trying to be too detailed in your textures. So I kept everything pretty simple on this one. For the stone, I've speckled in a few pixels. And for the sword, I'm going to use these like solid gold colors and have a red pattern on the grip. Um, actually, the fanciest that I got with this, I guess, was to design this gem that'll be mapped onto the pommel. And even for that, it's just done with like kind of a small highlight and a small shadow to keep it easy to read. 
Back in PicoCAD, I click over to the texture view mode and import the PNG file that I exported from Photoshop. And then I begin assigning each of the faces from their default location into a proper position on the artwork. If any of these come in facing the wrong way when you're mapping them, you can press R to rotate the way that it maps on. But for this stone texture at least, it doesn't really matter which way it's rotated. Uh, and in fact, it might be good to have some variety that way too. After texturing the rock, I could see that some of the faces of the sword were poking through. And with the way that I've sectioned the blade, I was able to actually just click and delete a few of those faces to hide that, uh, like how we were cleaning up the uh, mesh earlier. Um, the blade itself ends up being in the same gray color anyway, so it's probably not too big of a deal if you had things clipping through like that, but I like to tidy this up anyway. Uh, I was also happy to see that the pommel artwork came in nicely, uh, so that seemed to be a good level of rendering for this sort of thing. I'm pretty happy with how those two came together, but right now it's literally just a sword and a stone, so I'm thinking more decoration is in order. And the first thing I'm thinking to do is to put a bird on it. So to get that going, I'm actually just extruding a cube, and I figured I could bump the ends out in different ways while pulling the vertices down to create some angling to it. Um, it's not obviously a complete form that looks like a great bird or anything, but it's just kind of a small deco piece, so I think it'll help keep the load simple here. Likewise, I'm creating some pieces of tall grass out of cubes as well, and just moving the points around rather randomly. I've seen people do cool things where they actually paint out grass on the texture artwork and then mask it off using the alpha function, but I like the idea of having the tall grass be these sort of small chunky pieces like this rather than a flat plane. However, I am going to use a singular plane to create a piece of ground below this, and you can kind of think of that like a sheet of paper for now that we'll end up assigning texture artwork onto. All right, so let's take a look at the finished piece, and then after that, I'll walk it back a bit to share more about these finishing touches. Here we go. Alright, so if you're curious about how the flat plane becomes this custom rounded shape here for the grass, in my texture artwork I've drawn a large circular grass design, and then filled in the rest of the square footprint as pink. Because I haven't used this color in any other part of my design, I can go up to the color tool and change the alpha setting to pink, and it'll make anything that's pink disappear from the render. Uh, it's basically like using green screen technology I suppose, um, and it's a fun trick for getting much more custom designs here. Other than that, I decided I'd just go ahead and try to max out my file here, and I did that by adding in a few more rocks here and there, and those are just one of the default pyramid shapes. The last thing I wanted to mention was that I decided to make the bird into a blue color um, because it looks cool with the other color scheme going on, um, but also it's a nod to the Twitter bird um, since I got this prompt idea from the PicoCAD Daily Twitter account. So thanks again to them for posting prompts like this, and let's close out here with some CRT time. So thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.